Don't play it. I can't okay. say it. I remember Joseph, did we prayed for him a few weeks ago. And uh, yes, Evelyn is her name? We can get them talking. Yvonne. So we pray for Yvonne. That's yes, and so let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Lord, we do thank you for bringing us here on this Sunday morning. It is Pentecost Sunday, Lord. We remember the great move of the Holy Spirit about two thousand years ago, and yet, Lord, we know the Holy Spirit is still alive and well and active even today. So we invite the Holy Spirit to come in and be with us today as we worship here at Kansas Avenue. We pray that he would fill us up as individuals and fill up our church as well. And Lord, we think of those today who need prayers especially. We think of Betty Atwell, who has recently been hospitalized. We, we ask for your healing touch with her. We think of Debbie Gasper. We pray for your healing with her to help her to get strong enough to get back to church soon. I know she wants to, Lord. We pray for Don down in Texas to bring him back to complete health. And of course, Joseph, we pray for this little child who needs your touch, Lord, your healing. And, and we know, Lord, you are able to do that. So we, we're going to ask you, Lord, to heal Joseph and bring him back so his organs don't fail and you give him the health that would show your power and your love for him. Father, we thank you for the gift of life that you've given to so many uh, that have passed on. We think of Kathy Baining's mother. And just recently, Julia Lynch passed away a week or so ago. We ask your, uh, again, your comfort for Kathy and her family as they keep uh, their mother in their thoughts and, and at this time just going through the, the grief of, and, and of the loss. And, and we, we thank you for Kathy. We ask for your healing touch on her as well as she's been getting some medical treatments. And so we, we just ask your presence with Kathy also. Lord, for those that are traveling, we pray for a safe return trip tonight for Norbert as he's been out in California. We ask you to give him a safe journey back with Ed. Um, just give them a, a good trip back, help them to be refreshed when they return. And Lord, for all those other prayer requests and needs in our church family, we just know that you are aware of them, Lord, and you will answer those prayers, Lord. You will come through for us. We just know you will. And we ask you to give us your guidance and your presence as we go into the service right now. As we pray that prayer, Lord, that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before we have our next song, I'd like to... Let you know we really appreciate Angie and Joe being here as always. We they, they add so much to our services, so we are blessed to have them here this morning. Our next song will actually be coming from a, a, a book that I don't think we have. Is this is this the one from page three thousand eight? Open the eyes of my heart. Okay, so the words here will just be up on the screen. So thanks so much, guys.
heart, Lord, I want to see Jesus. That's a good prayer for us to pray every day. Amen. Yes, indeed. I tell you what, I'm excited. It has been a, a great few days here. I know it's a it's it's a journey, it's a struggle. It's, I've had some folks even tell me it's a jungle out there. <laughs> And uh, it is a jungle for sure, but you know what? God is with us through the difficulties of life. And I like that song, Great Is Thy Faithfulness, where it says, Morning by morning, new mercies I see. I just see more and more mercies every day. We got some great scriptures today, and today you get a bonus scripture. You know, it's kind of like getting the, uh, when you watch some of the shows on TV, like the Wheel of Fortune, and they pull that card and you get like a bonus. So y'all are going to get a bonus scripture today. I don't know if y'all have, do you have Ezekiel ready to go or, or not? I don't know if you do. Yes, Ezekiel is our bonus scripture today. Certain times of the year, there will be a special uh, added scripture passage to the lectionary. And today is one of those days. And I love Ezekiel. And uh, this is a great scripture. So I'm just going to read this. It'll be a little different maybe than the one you see up there, but that's okay. So this is called the Valley of dry bones, Ezekiel 37. The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor, and they were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. And then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? O oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones. Then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the wind, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet. A great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, We have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore prophesy to them and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, O my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live again and return home to your own land. And then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. Amen. I love that. We're going to do our responsive reading now uh, on Psalm 104. It's found back on page 826 in the back of the hymnal. You can also read it up on the screen there. But if you'd rather get your hymnal out, we can do that. And we're going to read the section over on the right side. It'll be verses 24 to 35. So we'll start over there actually on this page 827. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there. Living things, both great and great. There go the ships and Leviathan, whom you formed to play in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their rest. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the, Lord, may the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles. Who touches the mountains. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. 
I sing the praise to my God, all I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to the Lord, in whom I rejoice. Let the sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. All right. And now we turn to our New Testament reading today from the book of Romans. And it will be from chapter 8 and verses 22 to 27. And we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, Grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And then finally our gospel reading from the 15th chapter of John and into the 16th chapter. When the Advocate comes whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who has sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes... He will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I'm going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them right now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. May God add his blessing then to the reading of the scripture this morning. We have another hymn at this time, page 368. My hope is built on nothing Else than Jesus' blood and righteousness. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sleeping sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen. Join and sing.
favorite psalms. I never can sing it without thinking of the story that Jesus told about the two houses. One was built on the rock and one was built on the sand. It's so much better to build our house on the rock, isn't it? Hey, remember the old the old TV commercial, Prudential, get a piece of the rock. Well, let's get a piece of the rock today. Let's get some Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to ask the ushers to come forward at this time. where they were sitting. 
Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound of the crowd, they gathered and were bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be made known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, because the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you for the words here that we are given today for our scriptures, Lord, and may we find a way now, Lord, through your spirit to apply them to our lives and to the life of our church here. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord. May you speak the words you want every one of us to hear. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Last night, we had a kickoff service here at the church for the 40 days of prayer. And it was a wonderful evening. I think everybody was encouraged. I told somebody, I always felt like I was walking out on about 10 feet of air underneath my feet. I did not need Air Jordans. I had the Holy Spirit air that I was walking under. And it was a wonderful time because I felt a lot of love in the room. A lot of people that really didn't even know each other were there. I, I would say we had several guests, several visitors, but we were all family down there. And we also had the free flowing move of the Holy Spirit down there. The service had a little bit of structure, but for the most part it just sort of flowed, kind of moved. And we were just moving along with it. After that service last night, several people came up and told me how much they appreciated it. One person said, are we going to do this every Saturday night? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. I don't know. But this I did say, I believe something is about to happen. Something is about to come along here because, you see, when the wind begins to blow, you usually feel a little slight breeze picking up. And I felt a little breeze last night down in the lower level of the church down there. Now, it didn't come from the air conditioner or from a ceiling fan. It was the, the breathing of the Holy Spirit giving us a little of that wind that we were feeling downstairs last night. And... That was kind of the purpose of getting together, was to allow the Holy Spirit 
the freedom to come into our midst, maybe in a new way. I believe the Holy Spirit's with us, so many times we just don't recognize it. We don't recognize the fact that He's with us. But He is with us. Last night, I think, was maybe that little time we got a little jump start where we realized God wants to be a part of what we're doing. But we've got to let Him be a part of what we're doing. We can't always just manufacture stuff and make it happen. Because if we do, it's kind of like that seed that Jesus talked about that goes into that shallow soil and it springs up, and then all of a sudden it browns and withers because the heat got to it. It didn't have any real roots. We want to sink our roots down deep into the Spirit. And so that's what that was all about. We don't want to move until the Spirit tells us to move. But when He tells us to move, we better be ready to move. So we just want to do what the Spirit's telling us to do. When we picked that day of May 22nd for that service last night, that was done a few weeks ago, I do not believe I was aware of the fact that that was on Pentecost weekend. I just knew that it would be the last 10 days of May with 30 days of June, and there was your 40 days of prayer. And I love that feeling of 40, don't you? Because there's so many references in the Bible to 40 days. You know, there's the flood of the days of Noah, 40 days and 40 nights. There was Moses going up into the mountain to get the Ten Commandments, 40 days, 40 nights. Jesus went up into the wilderness to be tempted before he started his earthly ministry, 40 days, 40 nights. And then after Jesus raised from the dead, he was on earth for 40 days. So this term 40 days, there's significance, there's symbolism there. And so I thought, that's just like the Lord, isn't it? To make us have this start for our 40 days of prayer coincide with Pentecost. I just thought that was phenomenal. But nothing surprises me with the Lord. And I don't believe there's ever any coincidences with the Lord. Now, I believe that Pentecost should not be limited to this particular Sunday of the year where we really go out of our way to dress things up a little bit to make it look like we really are aware of Pentecost. Because we are, I believe, everybody here today is. But Pentecost should go with us 365 days a year. We should always be living in that awareness of the Holy Spirit. Always. And let the Spirit empower us. And yet, there are times when we need a little help. You know, I was thinking about a car that I had one time. And that car needed a little help. The battery had run dead. And it didn't really matter what it I like to talk about my old beat up cars. You ever notice that? We talked about the old BW bus last week, how I had to do a jump start, you know, I had to pop the clutch to start it. If you were here, you might remember that story. I'm not gonna test you on it. You know, if you didn't remember, that's cool. <laughs> but but I have I can tell you a lot of cars we've had, the battery has run dead on. And and typically what happens then is we've got to go out and find the jumper cables. Now, to me, jumper cables are only good if they're in the car that you need them in, or if somebody has jumper cables. They look much good hanging in the garage, right? But there are times where we need a little help to get our car started. And we use those jumper cables, and that starts us up, and that gets us moving. So Sometimes I believe a day like today, maybe it's something like last night, it's that jump start. It gets us started. It gets us charged up. And now we can go. But once we get going, we still need help. We cannot do it on our own. I think that's where a lot of us Christians make the mistake. We think we can just keep going and do it all on our own. And it doesn't work that way. Back in about 1981, there was an old Pontiac that I was driving. And you know, I was always trying to get the cheapest gas in town. I don't know about you. I, I always like to find the cheapest gas. And I knew I was getting low on gas this particular Friday afternoon, about 4 o'clock. And I was over about 21st and Buchanan, somewhere over there. I knew there was a gas station a block or two up the street. If I could just get up to that gas station, I might save two pennies a gallon. And so I kept going, and all of a sudden, the car started sputtering. And right there in the middle of 21st Street, in the middle of that rush hour traffic, the car stopped. Now, I know y'all have never had that happen, but trust me, it's no fun because you start panicking. You, your, your hands start to sweat. The cars are behind you. You don't know what's going on. You put your hood up. Now there's a breakdown. And you know what you did. You let your car run out of gas. And I even compounded the problem that day 
because I thought I would take matters in my own hand, thinking that maybe I could salvage a fume or a drop of gas. So I kept starting and starting and starting. Then not only did I have a empty gas tank, but I had a starter that got burned out. Here's the thing. There's a lesson there. We've got to have fuel to keep going. Amen. We can try to start all we want until we have the fuel in the tank. We ain't going very far. We've got to fuel up. We've got to stay fueled up. And when we feel our tank going low, we've got to get some help. And so, as Christians, our tank is filled up by the Holy Spirit. Pentecost isn't just this one day a year for us to recognize. And it's not a name that we give to people who maybe talk in tongues or raise their hands in worship or shout and holler and stuff. If y'all want to shout and holler and speak in tongues in here, you got my blessing. But Pentecost is about this change in your heart where the Spirit is leading us and guiding us and He is filling us so that we have power. You know, God called us. God chose us. Jesus saved us when He died for us. And the Holy Spirit gives us power. That's kind of the order that it goes in. We've got to have power. We've got to have fuel, folks. And that comes from the Holy Spirit. In this session today in Acts chapter 2, there's the story of what happened on that day of Pentecost. But before we get into that, just remember what happened prior to this. And this all happened in a relatively short period of time. To give you an idea of just how much had happened in this short amount of time, go back with me to about the very first of April. Doesn't seem that long ago, does it? Think of the things that have happened. Things like, well, you know, things are pretty much the same now as they were in April. For most folks, there have been some changes, obviously. Some people have had different experiences. But for a lot of people, six weeks, seven weeks doesn't make a whole lot of difference. We're just sort of floating along. But in this time frame, it was monumental. Jesus Christ went to the cross and died. He went into the grave. Three days later, he rose from the grave. For 40 days, he showed himself to his followers. On that 40th day, he ascended into heaven. And he said before he left, don't leave Jerusalem because I'm going to send this gift to you. The Holy Spirit is going to come. Just wait in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere. And then 10 days later, when the day of Pentecost came, then the Holy Spirit arrived. Within 50 days, all of that took place. It's an amazing amount of things that occurred in that short of a period of time. So, Jesus made it clear not to leave Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came. I was having a little fun with this this morning because I thought, what would have happened nowadays if Jesus had left and he told his followers, just hang out for a while, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, don't do anything until you see the Holy Spirit, until you receive the Holy Spirit. I'm thinking about the time Jesus disappeared up in the clouds and the angels came and said, why are you looking up there? He's going to come back again someday. I'm, I'm thinking as soon as we turned and started heading back to our upper room, we were probably going to start, okay, we're going to get a couple of committees started. Up. Who wants to be on the finance committee here? Who wants to be on the building committee? Who's going to do outreach? Who's going to do evangelism? You know, we're going to start getting committees because we've got to do stuff because God needs our help. Instead, he tells them to wait. Go up there and wait in Jerusalem. Interestingly, he didn't tell them for how long, did he? So they're up there in this room. And, I mean, as much as we love our family and our friends, typically, after a while, it's hard to be around a lot of people. We want our space. We want our distance. We want to kind of just, you know, have a little elbow room. Well, they were together. And here's the thing. They had no idea how long it was going to take. Jesus didn't say, 10 days from now, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He just told them to wait. And so they waited. And then when the Holy Spirit came, they were ready. Jesus is never early. He's never late. He's always right on time. I want you to think about something in this whole story. That when the Holy Spirit came, it was also the day of Pentecost, which was actually a Jewish festival. And it was celebrated 50 days after Passover. So... Pentecost, we think of as a Christian celebration like what we're doing today. Actually, it was a Jewish celebration, celebrating the harvest. And the thing about this was that the timing was so perfect because people from all over the world who, who were of the Jewish tradition had come to Jerusalem for that 
Pentecost celebration. But Pentecost not only celebrated the harvest, there was a second component to Pentecost that maybe is even maybe more relevant to us today. Because the Jews believed that it was on Pentecost that the law was given to the nation of Israel. So that they received this law that we would call the Old Covenant, Ten Commandments. That's what they celebrate on Pentecost. For us, in Christ, those of us who believe in Jesus, we believe that the new law has come. That's the law of grace that came through Jesus Christ. That did not abolish the law, but it fulfilled the law. That through Jesus now, we don't have to keep all the commandments on our own because we cannot be good enough to get into God's good graces. We just can't. It's all a gift. It's all from Christ because of faith in Him. So, when we believe in Christ, now we have access to God. And we don't have to keep all of the commands that uh, the, the people of Israel were keeping just to the, so that they could uh, be forgiven or that they could uh, show God they were sorry for their sins. Jesus Christ has paid for all of our sins. Sure, He wants us to obey Him. He wants us to believe in Him. But ultimately, it's for what He did for us, not for what we did for Him, that we've got this relationship. When the disciples were up in that upper room, they realized that they were empty, I believe. That, that they needed to be filled up. Kind of like that car I was telling you about. When you realize the car is out of gas, it doesn't take a genius to figure out, somebody better get some gas and put in this car so it'll run again, right? You don't have to go to auto mechanic school. You don't have to go to YouTube to see how to put the gas in. Most of us know how. Right? We just got to get the fuel. And so they recognized that. These, these people recognized that they were empty. And the best part was, they allowed the Spirit to come and fill them. They got the good stuff. They got the pure Amen. fuel. Welcome the fuel of the Holy Spirit. And the fuel of the Holy Spirit is what got them empowered to go out and to spread the word of Jesus Christ into their world. So, Jesus told them that in John 14 and... Uh, verses 15 to 18, that he was going to send this Holy Spirit to them, this comforter to them. And I think things were starting to make sense to him finally. Listen to these words as I read them from John 14 and verses 15 to 18. If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. So Jesus has told them about all these things that are going to happen. He tells them, I'm going to leave the Spirit for you. And as we just read in our scripture passage this morning from John 15 into 16, Jesus said, you know, it's actually going to be better for you when I leave because if I don't leave the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Helper, he can't come to you. But once I leave, you're going to get this. And you're going to have all this power to do things even greater than what I've done. It's all about bringing people to Christ, ultimately. If you, if you really want to know what all this is about, it's about bringing people into this kingdom of heaven. When the day of Pentecost came, right after that section that we read today, I found it extraordinarily fascinating that the crowds were gathered. What in the world is going on? They, they heard the rushing of the wind. They, they, they heard... The people speaking in tongues that were their own language. And they couldn't figure out. These were unschooled Galileans. They didn't go to language school. They didn't have these uh, CDs where they learned all these languages as they were driving their camels to work and stuff, you know. They, how in the world did this happen? But it did happen. And it got their attention. And then Peter steps up. Now Peter is speaking in Greek. That was that common language for all of them. So now Peter's speaking in another language they all understood. And he says, these, these guys aren't drunk like you think they are. I mean, come on, folks. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Nobody gets drunk this early. Even the disciples. But, no, this is what the prophet Joel was talking about. In the end times, God's going to pour out his spirit upon the people who follow him. And the young people are going to see visions. The, the, the old men are going to dream dreams. He's going to pour out everybody. 
Age doesn't matter. Social status doesn't matter. The slaves are going to get it. Everybody's going to get the Holy Spirit. And so, then Peter goes into this sermon that is phenomenal. And he basically tells the whole story of Christ in a very short amount of time, very short space. And when he does the altar call, 3,000 people come forward. I mean, even Billy Graham would have been impressed by that. And so, the power of the Holy Spirit came into play that day. Today, as we, as we think about that, what do we do with this story? How do we put it into our own practice? I think, first of all, we realize that, like those early disciples, we need to be filled up. And I've even gone so far as to say that if you had a cup up here, I would just take my cup. I realize even if there's a little bit of me left in a great big cup, that little bit of me could pollute the whole thing. I want to dump me out. I want to get me out of the way. Maybe get a towel and wipe it out, wash it up, and make it clean. Then, Lord, you fill me up with your spirit. The other thing that we saw in this today was besides the wind was the fire. The tongues of fire came down on each individual person. Now, the fire represents maybe purification. God's power. It's been all the way through the Old Testament. The, the, the fire is going to burn away all the impurities so that what's left is 100% pure. Well, we want God to do that in our lives as well. He'll do it for each individual, but He'll also do it for the group. So He did it for both. The tongues of fire didn't just come over everybody, one big tongue of fire, but it went over each and every person. I believe that's what He wants for us, to come in, to get into our hearts, to get into our lives, change us, Make us new. But again, we've got, to, we've got a little bit to do with how that happens. We've got to dump ourselves out and allow Him to fill us up. Once we do that, God's got something to work with. And that's some great things can happen. Sometimes we get stuck in our own ways of doing things, don't we? We're all kind of creatures of habit. I've got certain things I do the same way. I used to tell my wife, if I deviate one thing, I'll lose my car keys. If I don't go upstairs and put my stuff in the same place every single day, then I will be looking for my car keys. And sometimes I've even found them in my pants because I didn't put them where I thought they were going to be. <laughs> Just being honest. <laughs> and But we're all creatures of habit. Sometimes those habits are good. But sometimes the Holy Spirit wants to move us into a new area. You know, I, I would just say this as we close today. Let's, let's allow the Spirit to move in our midst as He would see fit. Let's be open to what He wants us to do. I don't say we should throw all the old stuff away. No. The Spirit will tell us what to do. It doesn't mean all the new stuff is great either. You know, He's going to use what we bring to Him. All of the experiences that we have, we've got a lot of years of experience in this room. God will use all of these experiences in a new way because He made us that way. He gave us these experiences. And it's so easy to kind of gloss over the things in the past that we wish weren't part of our past. But you know what? God can use those as well. He can use even the hard times, the difficulties, the pain, the problems, the addictions, the hang-ups, the habits, things that now you've overcome. But He's got you through those. And He wants you now to be able to share that hope with other people. So that's what it's all about. Sharing the hope in Christ. Sharing the love of Christ with other people. And God will help us to do that. As we close here today, I would just say as we think about where we want to go from here. You know, COVID is kind of decreasing a little bit. It's been a year where we, we're kind of able to say, you know what, well, we're not doing anything because we can't do anything. And it's easy to make an excuse, isn't it? Well, you know, we're not out doing a lot of stuff because, well, you know, I didn't really want to do it anyway, but now I can blame COVID. Now I can't blame COVID. I've got to go out and do stuff. When God tells me to do it, I've got to get out and do what He wants me to do. And so I pray that, that we as a church will be open to possibilities that are all around us. I mean, everything from the first Friday art walk that's right on this block, literally, where we can reach out to people as they're coming by, to reaching out to our neighbors who are behind us and around us and in front of us and on either side. We've got so many opportunities to share the love of Christ with people. But first, He wants to fill us up. Because when He does that, it'll be the Lord working through us. It won't be us doing it on our own. 
He'll be working through us. He'll give us the power to do it. So let's trust in Him. Let's let the Spirit fill us up so we can go from here. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank You for the encouragement from the stories that You have given us in the Bible from Old Testament to New Testament about breathing into those dry bones and bringing them back to life when it, when it seemed like all hope was lost. And you breathed in there, and those dry bones came back to life. Lord, sometimes we feel like we're dry bones. We feel like all hope is lost. What's the use? And yet, Lord, you've got such a great plan for us. Help us to allow your breath, your spirit to come in and revive us and to bring us back to life so that we can go out with joy and with love and with enthusiasm as we share your love with others. We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a song, page 500. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Great song.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you are able, I would invite you to stand for the singing of our last song, page 347. It is called Spirit Song. Amen. Mm -hmm. 